I want to start by taking you back to Tuesday, December 4th, 2012. It was nearly three years ago now, but it was just a normal day at work. I woke up like a normal day. I was working on the Hot 30 Countdown in Sydney. It was Australia's biggest national nighttime radio show. We put forward our ideas for the day, work out what we're going to do, and one of those ideas was to prank call the hospital. You may recall the, the Duchess of Cambridge had just been admitted for severe morning sickness and the Royal Pregnancy had just been announced. When someone said, let's do a prank call, alarm bells didn't go off because we'd done so many prank calls before. Hundreds of prank calls have been done and there's policies and procedures in place to protect everyone involved. The idea was we would do ridiculous accents, really silly accents, impersonate the Queen and Prince Charles, and the idea was to get hung up on, see how quickly we could get hung up on. The comedy was meant to be in us. We were the ones that were meant to be the joke of the call. Somehow, within four seconds, we were transferred to the private nurse of the Duchess of Cambridge, which then created the Royal Hoax call. Within days, we were worldwide headlines, but Prince Charles was making a joke about it, and the hospital came out and said, there's going to be no discipline for anyone involved. You had Conan O'Brien and these, these big stars in America doing sketches on you. So by Friday, you're high-fiving yourselves. You know, you're excited because you think there's going to be no consequences. Well, there was. There was a big consequence. And in that moment, my life changed forever. Hospital that treated the Duchess of Cambridge has been found dead just days after falling victim to an Australian radio prank. Clearly, the DJs who were involved in it never could have anticipated that this would happen. I don't think they even thought they would be successful. They've been yanked off the airwaves. The radio station cancelled their show. All those biting headlines continue, and soon they may have to face questioning from the Australian police. The global backlash has been fierce, from online death threats to calls for prison. You scumbag, hope you get what's coming to you. I hope you're happy now. The receptionist you rang has committed suicide. You have blood on your hands now. When I first found out about the death of Jacintha Soldana, there is six hours that I don't recall. Six hours still to this day, I cannot remember what happened in that six hours. My partner does, because he spent the time on the balcony thinking I was going to jump off. The shock and the grief that I felt for this poor woman, you know, it absolutely consumed me and, and that was the start of my major depression. But it didn't help that we had headlines like this. This is in the media, calling us murderers, no compassion, they should be arrested, disgusting, appalling. Has anyone ever been called any of those things before? And why would you want to? You know, I was being called these things and that is not who I am. So I was believing what I was reading. But while we were in lockdown, which we had to go into because the death threats were so severe, someone actually sent bullets with our name on them to the police station. You know, we had 24-hour protection in our houses, not a speck of sunlight, no communication. You know the only thing I did for three months? Go online. Go online because I wanted to learn everything I could about Jacintha and her family. And by doing that, I was reading what everyone was saying about me and I believed that was the majority. I believed that that's what people really thought about me. Things like this. You're a dumb, hideous and heartless bitch. If the royal baby dies, I'm going to gut you like the pig that you are. You have just bullied someone to death. You just killed a mother. I've made a new smell and it belongs around your neck. I can't wait to watch you take your last breath. So three months of consuming hundreds and hundreds of these messages made me believe that I did deserve to die. I believed what these people were saying. I believed they were real people. I didn't think that they were trolls. I thought this is what the world thought of me. But there was a pivotal moment where I realised that there is a difference between having an opinion and abusing someone. And that's when I read this. Eye for an eye, I'm coming for you and your mum, my mum, an innocent victim. They're now threatening her life. This is not an opinion, this is abuse, this is a troll. And that was the moment that I realised there is a difference between that. And this is exactly what a troll is. 
Trolling is when a user anonymously abuses or intimidates others online for fun. It's online behaviour that provokes and is offensive. Now, some of you might think, well, if you ask for a job in the entertainment industry, you just got to suck it up, this is what you get. No, you can have opinions. You can say, I think Mel is getting fat. Great, that's your opinion. I think Mel isn't doing a very good job today. Great, that's an opinion. I think Mel should die. That is abuse and it's illegal. And that's what people are doing. And it's not just us. Who here has a social media account? I expect majority of the room. You're putting your life in the public forum. Every time you post a photo, every time you do a tweet, you're putting yourself out there and the bullying and the trolling could happen to you. But the most vulnerable people caught up in this trolling are young people. Suicide is the number one killer of young girls. I've been doing a program in schools where I try and help combat bullying. We go around there with a few celebrities, do a talk, and I just remember this day so clearly. A girl came up to me at the end of one of the sessions. She was 11. And she said, Mel, I want to die. An 11-year-old girl that thinks there is no other way through. Do you know how gut-wrenching that is? Her life hasn't even started, but they don't have the coping mechanisms they need to get through this. And there are some great initiatives in place at the moment to help combat bullying but online bullying, trolling, cyberbullying, it is a whole new world and it's getting ahead of us. You know, we don't have control on it and it's affecting too many people. So what I want to do is create a National Day of Awareness. Troll Free Day 2016. This is what we need. And it's not just a day to raise awareness. This is a day for action. This is not just saying, okay, yep, make sure you say good things, don't do that. People need to stand up and be accountable. We need the social media companies to dedicate that 24 hours to making changes, put extra resources into going online and removing abusive material. They need to think about this and do something about it. They always say, yes, we've got report, we've got block. Well, that's great, show us how powerful you are. Think of how many people are out there and how many of them are trolls, yet the trolls are winning. We have the resources to do something about it. The authorities, this is illegal for that 24 hours. I want to see more arrests. You know, charge people. Let them know that what they're doing is not okay. We need the news outlets. We need the gossip sites to disable their comments. Don't allow people to comment for 24 hours. Take away their power. And if they do want to comment, make them into their full name, their mobile number, their email address, give them a face, and then we'll see how brave they are. I want to get the celebrities, any high profile people involved to make a stand and to not tweet or post for 24 hours, declare it's a troll free day, and then dedicate an extra hour to making sure they go through their accounts and block and report anything abusive. I was recently just on Celebrity Apprentice again and the trolling came up again. For me, I'm, I am honestly fine with it now because as you can see, I've had the worst said to me. There, there is nothing else anyone can say to me that is worse than what I've already had. So for me, I'm strong enough to do this. But even my castmates who are strong, grown up, you know, they've been in the spotlight for a while, they got so much trolling and abuse. My friend Tim Dormer just kept getting abused every single day. Who are these people? Why are they doing it? You know, words can hurt. We've got a lot of mental health issues that we need to deal with and trolling does not add to it. You know, trolling creates this whole new world that is gonna get away from us. We need to do something about it and troll free is what I wanna do. And I want your help as well. I need the public's help. Next time, and I don't think anyone in this room would be a troll. I really don't. You know why? Because you've got a life and you've come and done something today. Trolls don't have lives. They don't. They, they absolutely don't. So when you see it, please block, report, don't engage. You have the power to do something about it. And for that 24 hours, I want the trolls to get some goddamn sun on their skin. Go outside 
and live a life. Now, if you are someone that's bullied or you have a little sister or a nephew that you know is getting bullied online, I want you to remember this. Online, big balls. (laughs) Face to face, little balls. Big balls, little balls. They will not say it to your face. And unless they're willing to say it to your face, don't let it get to you because they are gutless and we're gonna take a stand. I want you to join me in Troll Free next year. Thank you. Thank you.